Hello everyone, this is Chris Benshoff with Masterpiece Models again. Uh, this is going to be part two of my cork tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be focusing on doing the cobblestones and prepping the base for those cobblestones. Um, I, as I mentioned in the earlier video, um, I'm going to be using some uh, street drains uh, in this base right in there, and this is what I'm going to be using. Um, in order to get this prepped right now everything is all flat on one plane and when the streets were built the they built uh, gutters along the side of the roads to collect the water and uh, divert it into those drains so we're gonna focus on prepping the base to uh, get that in there it's quite simple and pretty easy it takes just a little bit of time um, so today I'm gonna be using my uh, Balsa stripper, as I was last time, I'll be using the Euro tool for the texturing, uh, my X-Acto or scalpel in this case for cutting, tweezers of course, those are going to come in extremely handy this time as the pieces are all very small, and a piece of sandpaper, and today I'll be using a wood chisel as well. Uh, mine's not overly sharp, I recommend making it... Uh, as sharp as you can or using a new one. And uh, the cork we'll be using is our Masterpiece Models uh, three millimeter thickness cork. Um, that's going to give us the uh, proper um, the proper distance between the stone and the sidewalk. So to get started what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my scalpel and where the drain is going to go I'm just going to simply cut along the line where I laid it out. This will make it so that I have kind of a cleaner cut. It doesn't have to be rocket science, I'm a little outside of the lines. And then along the sidewalk uh, the uh, curb stones, you want to run your blade along there as well a few times to get down just a little bit. Uh, this will make it so your edge comes out cleanly. Take a little bit of care so that you don't cut into your curb stone. It can happen a little bit at the bottom, that's not a problem. That's going to be covered with your cobblestones later. Alright, and then with the uh, chisel, you're just going to slightly take away some of your some of your board. If you're using a uh, foam board or something like that for your base, it's going to be a lot easier. You won't need the chisel. Um, you can just use a uh, blade at that point. Don't need to go too deep, just a little bit of a recess for it. You want the storm drain to just be slightly lower than the cobblestones when it's all done. Um, that way it would actually allow the, the water that would collect to actually drain down in there. And then to make the uh, gutter, I'm going to hold my chisel at an angle against the curbstone and I'm just going to slowly uh, remove an angled section from in front of the curbstones. Another option if you don't want to do the chisel is you could use a Dremel at this point. Just be a little bit careful as far as how much you're removing with your power equipment. Which hopefully you can see what we did there. It actually comes down and then it drops against the curb there. 
That'll uh, make the cobblestones tilt downwards a little bit and into the gutter. And I always go back and clean up the fuzzy edge with my uh, scalpel. That way none of that's sticking up and in my way for when I start laying the cobblestones. Alright, the uh, base is going to be prepped now and ready for the application of the cobblestones. Um, this is where I would actually typically glue my drain in place, that way we can actually uh, put the cobblestones around it and get everything in where it's supposed to go. A little bit of CA glue. Should hold it in place. And there we go, the framework for that drain is in place. So now while we're waiting for that to uh, fully dry so we don't bump it or misplace it or anything like that, I'm going to set that off to the side and we're going to start prepping for our cobblestones. Um, like I said before, the cobblestones are going to be the most time consuming um, depending on uh, how well you do with the tedious stuff. It could be the part where you want to pull your hair out, but uh, we're going to be cutting a bunch of strips. We're going to be doing sanding and then finally chopping them into their proper length and then sanding those edges as well. So with the three millimeter cork, uh, this edge is all nice, nice and clean already. Um, to do these strips since they're smaller, what I recommend doing is taking your sandpaper and easing over the the edge before you cut your strip. That eliminates uh, one edge that needs to be sanded after you cut it. 
which once you get the the small little strips it's a lot easier just to have to do one uh, but either way you can do both sides it speeds up the cutting just a little bit but then you have a lot of sanding later And my uh, stripper here is uh, set to 2.5 millimeters. And that's going to give us the width of the cobblestone. And then when I go and chop it to length, they're actually going to be uh, about 8.5 to 9 millimeters uh, in length, which I've already set my stop on my chopper for. So I'll just sand the other side here. Now that strip is ready for cutting. Depending on how many cobblestones you're doing, um, there's times where pretty much the only thing I do at my bench that day or evening is uh, cut cobblestones. If you have a large, large street section that you want to do, it's going to take you a long time to get it all prepped and ready to go. Um, again, most tedious part, but it's going to pay off in the end when you get the final look. Now again, you don't have to sand the edge before you cut the strips, um, if you prefer not to. You can speed up the strip process by doing that, obviously, because you just keep cutting. But then you do have to go back and sand them later. go pretty quick but again now I'm gonna have to sand both sides of these and they are pretty pretty small and hard to hold on to so it's just up to you what you want to do
I'm going to go ahead and start with these four. I'll see on the other ones later. And this is the chopper once again. And uh, I've set it up to approximately 9.5, 10 millimeters uh, for the stop position. Um, since these are small, what I like to do to speed up the cutting process is usually no more than three. It gets a little bit hard to control them after that. Um, but I put three strips together, line them all up. And that way you can cut all three at the same time. Speeds up the production just a little bit instead of cutting one at a time. You don't have to do all your cobblestones the same size. Um, I recommend looking at reference pictures for the area that you're wishing to represent. There's some streets that all the stones are pretty much the same uh, size and rectangle shape, and then there's some that uh, mix rectangles, smaller rectangles, and even squares into the pattern um, to get the final result. And obviously there's also the fan patterns and all that kind of stuff. We're going to focus on the basic pattern, which is the uh, kind of like a pr brick pattern. It's just going to be uh, one spanning the joint of the other two next to it, similar to that. But again, there's lots of styles. Um, just keep in mind that the majority of cobblestones in Europe tend to be square or rectangle, not round. Um, very rarely do you see the round cobblestones. It does happen, but it's not common. So just keep that in mind. So once you have your uh, cobblestones cut, like we do here, uh, the next step that you're going to focus on is going to be sanding over those fresh cut edges. Um, we already sanded both this side and this side. Now we need to do the short sides. Um, so again, I'm just going to take my sandpaper and just kind of ease over those. Not going too aggressive, just kind of trying to round, round off that sharp edge just a little bit. And since I know that uh, most of you, probably all of you, don't want to uh, sit here and watch a video that's uh, 45 minutes to an hour long of me sanding about uh, 200, 300 cobblestones. So I, uh, I sped up the process and I actually pre-sanded all these. Um, so we're just going to jump into uh, setting some cobblestones. So we're going to bring the base back in and uh, get my glue back over here. Again, I'm going to be using the uh, CA glue, the super thin stuff, to help speed things up. And put a little pile of cobblestones there for me to work with. And I'll be using my tweezers um, to help put everything in position. Um, so what we're going to do for setting up the street is most cobblestone streets, um, they had what, a, what I'll call a border or a gutter is the actual name for it. Um, so your street drains um, have a channel coming into them uh, from all the angles of the street, which is at a slight angle. That's why we Again, cut these troughs along the sidewalk. Um, typically, the cobblestones were set in uh, rows of two, 
along the sidewalk and then they would branch out the opposite way into the street. So that's what we're going to represent here. And uh, to get started, I'm just going to put some ultra thin CA, grab a cobblestone, I'm going to drop it right in up against my drain. And if you're using the MDF like I am, when you use the chisel, the CA tends to soak in really fast once you break the surface. So you might have to put a little bit more on once the first layer kind of seals it in. You're just going to continue laying your rows. You want to get them close to each other, but don't smash them up against each other. You do want just a little bit of a space, but don't overdo that space because at this scale, if you have it too wide of a space, it's going to really show and the seam is going to be way out of, out of scale and just look kind of awkward. So that's the first row there. Now, because the cobblestones are going to be in a brick pattern, as you can see, once I put the cobblestone here, it's going to leave a half cobblestone. So again, like I did with the uh, sidewalk sections, I'm just going to take a cobblestone and roughly cut it in half. Obviously, that's not completely in half. One side's bigger than the other. Again, that's not really critical. Move one to the side for the next one and sand that edge. And we'll drop that right there and continue the pattern. You want to try to keep the lines as straight as possible. Um, you can have a little bit of a wave to them, because over time, number one, uh, they do settle and shift. Number two, they were set by humans, not machines, in the old days. Now they have the cool machines that drop them in and lay them down all nice and perfect, but it wasn't the case back when these were laid. first first run of them there. Now since we have a full cobblestone on this side what I like to do is offset that look so that way we don't have a uh, full cobblestone on this side as well. It just kind of staggers that look. So I'm going to take the piece from when I cut the cobblestone, sand that edge really quick, and I will use that as my starting stone. And once again we'll continue the pattern. The corners are where it gets a little bit tricky you can have a little bit of a seam on a sharp corner. You might actually have to trim it just slightly um, so that you don't have a huge seam. Because as you can see right there, that's a very unrealistic look to that seam. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to remove just a little angle off the one I just laid. And that'll let that one 
tuck in there nice and close. Again, if you cut anything, make sure you sand those edges over. And as we know all too much, the uh, piece that I just set down, that super glue, of course it's sticking to my fingers. As I said before, I usually get more CA on me than I actually do the model. Every once in a while, you'll find yourself uh, putting some of these in upside down. Got to pay attention to those uh, sides, which one's sanded and which one's not. Goes fairly quick once you're. Uh, going and past all the cutting and sanding of these things but again take your time because this is where craftsmanship really comes in the uh, more time you take to make it look nice the better the end result is going to be and the more realistic it's going to look so one thing about uh, masonry is that you never want to do sloppy masonry, it makes for weak joints in real life and therefore we don't want to model it as weak joints. Around these radiuses is where you can actually use another half if you need it. And it's very common if you look in pictures of areas that have cobblestones around corners that have a radius. Um, a lot of times they will actually put a half stone in there. I've even seen a quarter of a stone. Um, because the outer perimeter is usually uh, tight enough that you're going to lose lose the staggered look of the pattern if you don't uh, which was the case right there so little half stone there and it's actually helping us go around the corner also the second ring that we're doing now that typically takes more cuts at an angle in order to make the pattern and then right here we're going to be using another half essentially these halves that we're using in the radius are like the stretcher stretcher bricks.
And there we go, we're around the corner. doing this right now in real time I know there's a lot of gaps in in what I'm explaining I'm doing but there's not a whole lot more to explain to it this is pretty much the whole concept right here um, so once we get a little bit further down once I start into the main street I'm actually going to uh, come back to this once I'm mostly finished um, that way you don't have to again sit here for uh, 20-30 minutes watching me lay a bunch of cobblestones. So there we go, there's our uh, gutter system. Now the other thing that I like to do is these corners typically mean that there's an intersection. Um, sometimes it's just going around a corner, but in this case I'm going to represent an intersection. So usually at the intersection the cobblestones are going to be going opposite ways. So this road, the uh, cobblestones will be going in this direction, and this road, they'll be going this direction, from gutter to gutter. So if you, again, look at reference pictures, nine times out of ten, there's going to be a transition. So since this street is going to be running this way, it's actually going to run all the way down into this corner. So it'll run around the corner and then that's where it's going to break off into the pattern. So what I do to represent that is take my little square that I have here and I'll just mark out a guideline right there doesn't have to be rocket science unless you're doing the whole street at that point you want it to go straight from corner to the opposite corner um, but in this case since we're representing just kind of a little wedge of the road here I'm not going to really worry about it so I'm actually going to uh, start on this street here And since there's a joint right here, I don't want to put that right there. I'm going to move it just a little bit so that it's away from that joint to start with. Using the line as a guide, I'm going to start laying the cobblestones and gluing them to my fingers again because that's that's what makes a great uh, tutorial video, huh? is when I'm gluing all of them to myself. Alright, there we go. And this final one, just going to hold the corner with my fingernail. And that kind of lays out where that angle is and cut it with my scalpel. Sand that edge, again always sanding any of your cut edges. test fit. A little bit big still. Let's take a small little sliver off of that. And there we 
we go. So that starts that off for there. And to accentuate this uh, this pattern here, I'm actually going to run a vertical stone, which then will be followed by another horizontal, kind of to really accentuate that there's actually a border here. And then I'll just go into the normal stone. So to start off with, um, when I'm doing this, I'll actually place this about halfway in the middle of that stone there. It's going to help me kind of keep it away from the joints. Um, this staggered usually you're going to run into a situation where you're either right on or pretty close to it, but from what I've seen in reference images that I've looked at, that's pretty common as the uh, length and width of these stones isn't necessarily made so that they stack perfect. So I gotta trim off this corner just a little bit so that we can go into that radius there. So it'll allow me to start here, and then uh, I'm going to work my way this way. I'll worry about filling that little gap there a little bit later. And right there is where I'm talking about. You'll see that uh, I don't hit any of the joints until I get to that one. But again, nothing to worry about. I've seen it in reference images, so it's perfectly fine with me. And there's the second one that I was talking about if it gets really close to it. I'm just going to have a little sliver here on the end. If you're making a whole street, it's a little bit easier because you don't have to worry about these little edges. But I'm kind of a fan of uh, these small little bases, and I like round bases and bases with some curves. So I'm usually uh, usually running into situations like this. And for here, start off with a full brick, or cobblestone I should say. A lot of people call them bricks as well. Really, they're not, but we'll call it a break as well. And if you have a piece of one laying around you run into a spot like that works out good you can just place it right in there and we're going to be using uh, 
half bricks again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-cut a few of them just so that they're on hand. And so I don't have to keep jumping back to cutting and sanding those. Just focus on laying the cobblestones. Alright, so since we started with a full brick here, we're going to need a half brick, or again, cobblestone. Everybody's got me calling them bricks now. I'm ashamed of myself. Alright. Right back in to the full. Every once in a while, I like to take my square and make sure that it's at least generally good. It's a little off. But again, with settling and hand laid, they tend to uh, not be perfect. So, if you want to be perfect, you can. Because this is always a option is to lay down a square And now, as you can see, we're back on square. Going back to a half. So it's every other row. Not really focused on making these uh, varying heights and stuff like that like I've done in the past. If you want to do that, you can. It's very easy to, by trimming off the back a little bit or adding a shim underneath it. But this is just a basic how to lay the patterns. And on a small base like this, a lot of times that uh, rough texture that is created by making those bumps all over the place kind of detra detract from the look. But also, once this is finished, a lot of this won't actually be visible. Um, once I start the third tutorial, that's going to be where I'm making the building that's going to go in the corner of this thing and it's going to be a ruined building so there will be uh, rubble and bricks um, covering the sidewalk and part of the street so if you're not going to see it in the end if it's going to be buried in a bunch of stuff then there's not really a point in modeling that detail unless you're inclined to do so and there's nothing wrong with that in the end you know it's there I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but I was talking about the capillary action of the CA glue. Um, 
the thin CA. What I like about it is if you didn't quite glue something down when you do the next row, you can see that it's actually going into those joints. I don't know if you can see it very well on the camera, but it actually pull, pulls it all in in between everything. And if there was something that was just a little bit loose before, it's not loose now. Try to catch it this time. There you go, you can see it flowing in there. So they're just going to follow this pattern all the way through. Once I'm done with this side, I'll uh, fill in these little pieces, again just by cutting a little angle off of a chunk of it, and uh, I'll come back later once this side's done, and we'll start going into uh, the texturing, which is very similar, if not the same, as the sidewalk, and also filling the joints. So I'll go ahead and finish this up here so we can move on to that. This is one reason why I like to uh, kind of task different days or uh, depending on the project, maybe an hour or so, whatever it takes, um, to doing these steps like cutting cobblestones. Um, it's kind of a tedious process, like I said. It's kind of a drag just sitting here doing nothing but cutting stuff. but when it comes to laying out your stone it's a lot nicer to sit here and just do this and actually get stuff done than do three or four rows run out of cobblestones and then have to sit there and make a bunch more and then do two or three rows and then have to do it all over again so if you have a whole stockpile that you can go to to use that just works out better for me um, because then I can just focus on what I'm actually doing instead of several different aspects of it. And I have way more than I need for this project. I just cut a bunch of them up. Like I said, there's roughly 200 or so that I cut. And I'm roughly halfway done with the job I need to do. And I haven't hardly even touched how many cobblestones I have. Just ran out of that first pile I dumped on the bench here. Cut one more half. And I'm going to finish this one up here which will finish the street. And just like the sidewalk, I'll come through once everything's cured with my knife and actually cut these to the base so it's nice and clean cut on the edges. But uh, 
that's pretty much all there is to setting these things. And uh, again, just got to fill a gap here and here. And I'll move on and do the street in the opposite direction on this side. So the cobblestones are actually going to be running this direction now, all the way through. Once I get that done, I will uh, start the camera back up and we'll go over a couple of more things. Alright, so I'm back and uh, got the streets laid out, as you can see. So everything's nicely done and I've gone ahead and cut and sanded the edge to match the edge of the base. Um, next up is texturing. And uh, this section up here is actually already textured. Um, I started doing the video and then my camera battery died, so uh, apologize about that, but we'll continue the texturing over here. So using the Euro tool again, um, I'm not really worried about the direction that I go on these cobblestones. They're small enough that there's not enough surface area to show the pattern that you're using. So I just kind of go any direction, all directions, doesn't really matter. Just looking to uh, rough some of the stones up and get a nice texture. You don't want to get too carried away because you can go too deep. And uh, on the edges here you want to be a little bit careful as the little pieces that you glued in on the edges and cut to shape of the base, um, sometimes they can pop out and then you got to start over and do those again. So. Um, Take your, take your time, take some care on the edges. Once the uh, texturing is done, just clean it out with a brush. Another way to clean that out too, if you have one, I do, but it's empty right now, is uh, one of those compressed air canisters. It uh, blows all the dust out very quickly. Um, I suppose you could use your airbrush too. Um, that would work. So we got the texture on the cobblestones now. So they're not just flat one-dimensional shapes. And uh, I think it's looking pretty good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be using patching plaster. Um, you can find that in pretty much any uh, hardware store uh, around any home improvement or hardware store. Uh, so I'm going to be using that. I'll be using a little uh, palette knife and also fingers. Uh, sometimes your fingers are the best option. Uh, it's sometimes for whatever reason with the palette knife it can get a little bit difficult to get it into all the all the little recesses. So. So, just gonna grab a chunk and start pressing it down in there. I wanna pay attention to the corners up against the uh, sidewalks and stuff like that. I wanna make sure to get up on the sides of the sidewalks, the curb stones, to fill in those joints as well. And you want to apply a decent amount of pressure as you're doing this to try to cram it all the way down into those joints. Um, if you've laid tile before, this is pretty much the same concept when you're at the uh, grouting stage. You really want it to get deep into the grooves um, so that way it doesn't flake out later.
And like I said, sometimes your fingers work better. Maybe not better in some cases, but quicker. Cover a larger area at a time. And if you are using your fingers to put this in, again, still maintain quite a bit of downward pressure to shove it down into those joints. And everything is free game at this point, so cobblestones, sidewalks, curbstones. If you have uh, a building that you've already done before this stage, um, you can go ahead and do the uh, brick as well. Or stones if you made your building out of stone. I'm just going to go through and make sure that get rid of this, most of this excess here around the sidewalk and that it's also pressed firmly down into there in all the joints. Another option if you want to is go ahead and fill the sides of this too. Um, it'll make for a cleaner look. Um, it's not a necessary thing, it just depends on the look that you want. And sorry, it's not really in the camera, but the camera I have I can't actually pan out very far, so. Just know I'm going around that outside edge. And there we go. And remove the uh, globby excess that got down into that storm drain. Just make clean up a little bit easier later. And that's all there is to that step. Close up the uh, patching plaster so it doesn't dry out on you. And then now we're down to uh, another messy step, and that's uh, removing all this excess. Um, you can wait till it starts to dry a little bit. Um, I wouldn't wait more than a couple minutes, um, but you can also do it as it's fresh too. It's starting to dry a little bit, but not too much. And uh, you can kind of critique how you want to do it. Um, I do it pretty much as soon as I'm done spreading it around. If you wait till it's completely dry, it's going to be a lot harder to get it out and uh, make it look decent. Using very minimal pressure, I'm just going to scrub it off in a uh, circular pattern. I usually start with the uh, high ground first, so sidewalk is the first one to get that treatment and the sides of the curbstones obviously you can't do the uh, circular motion very well on that and that's perfectly fine 
Just got to get it off the face there. And then down onto the cobblestones. Same amount of pressure on these. And knocking my camera over. Guys, about that. Tends to go a little faster if you don't have a, a camera mounted to one of those mini tripods because um, you can actually kind of speed things up a little bit and also having a sturdier table to work on. So the table doesn't shake while you're doing it is helpful. After I do the circular motion, I drag my brush in the direction of the joints. First the long ways, and then the short ways joints. This helps recess it just a little bit more. And makes the stones pop out. The uh, edges we'll leave to dry and then we'll sand those. That way it can be a nice clean edge versus uh, going through with the brush because that's going to remove what we just put in. Um, so take uh, the wide brush here and do some basic uh, cleaning here. Get rid of most of the powder and build up. that'll work for now. Now you just let this uh, completely set up. I would uh, recommend doing it probably overnight, um, at least 12 hours, to make sure that it's nice and hard before you do any kind of painting. Um, last thing you want to do uh, before priming or painting is to leave, leave this wet while you're painting, because that's going to leave a moisture barrier in between. You're going to get bubbles and peeling. Um, so make sure it's nice and dry and set up before you do your priming. So that's uh, about it. That's really how easy it is. Um, the hardest part is the time consuming part, which is cutting and sanding everything. Once you got a pile of cobblestone or brick to work with, it goes relatively quick. And uh, yeah, that's it. So you can use this technique for pretty much any scale. Um, if you get too small, it doesn't really work well unless you're doing stone. Brick doesn't work very well in uh, smaller than 48th scale. Um, it's difficult in 48th to make it look look good as well, just because the pieces are so small at that point. Um, but uh, definitely, I would say 35th scale and up, this is a good option to do. Um, and it's uh, relatively quick once you have your pieces cut. And I just, I've always liked the look of it. Um, clear back when I first started uh, modeling this type of stuff. Um, I don't even remember how many years ago it is now. Um, many years ago. So I was inspired by a couple other people that did it. And 
started working with it and have always come back to this. I've I've tried other materials and I just I always like the look of this in the end. So all right, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope this answers some questions. Um, if not, feel free to post questions in the uh, comment section, either on the YouTube channel or on our Facebook page. And uh, I'll be working on the third tutorial, which will be the building for this corner. Um, Got to do a little bit of uh, thinking and design on that so that I can uh, start it. And I'll be back and show you how to cut some bricks and assemble them into a building. Alright, thanks for watching guys.